We're not usually aware of it, but actually there's miles and miles of air above our heads, and the weight of that air presses down on, on everything. Now, the insides of my body are about the same pressure as the weight of this air on the outside, so we're not usually aware of this. But if you go on a car journey, for example, up a mountain or down into a deep valley, you can often feel that sense of pressure change because you hear a clicking in your ear. Now, what I've got here is a glass bell jar connected via a tube to a pump. And I can use the pump to take the air out of the glass bell jar. So in some ways, we can make our own sort of atmosphere. Now, initially, of course, the air inside here is at this pressure, what we call atmospheric pressure. But with the pump, I can remove the air and change the pressure inside this. So the first experiment I want to show you I've got a balloon here that's connected up to the pump. And normally the pressure of the air inside the balloon is the same as the outside, so it doesn't do anything. Now if I pump on the pump and remove the air that's inside the balloon, you can see, you can see that the balloon collapses. And you sort of intuitively feel that pumping on the pump has caused the whole thing to collapse. But actually what you've done is you've moved the air inside the balloon and it's the air pressure now outside that's caused it to collapse because of this enormous pressure. And if I had a much bigger pump you might think that the thing would collapse even more. But actually that's not so because once you've removed the air inside the balloon there's no more air to remove. It's only the outside air pressure that causes the balloon to collapse. So a much bigger pump perhaps might do it quicker but it wouldn't actually be any difference in the end. So in this experiment, I've got a balloon that I've partly blown up and I've tied the knot in it. So that air is trapped inside the balloon now. And the pump is now connected to the glass vessel here. So if I pump on this, the pressure inside the balloon, well, that air inside there will remain the same because it's sealed in. But the pressure outside will obviously go down as I pump on the pump. And the question is, what's going to happen? Well, as we pump on this and reduce the air pressure in the bell jar, the air inside the balloon remains the same, but of course the outside pressure is going to drop, which means that that air inside the balloon now will expand, if you like, to take the place of the air that I'm removing. So as you pump on this, the balloon should get bigger and bigger. So now using the pump, I've reduced the pressure of the air in the bell jar, which means the air inside the balloon has been allowed to expand. So the balloon is actually a lot bigger now. Now if I let the air back into the bell jar, the pressure of the air inside the bell jar is going to get bigger, which is going to, if you like, compress the balloon. And we can see that if I let the air in, can see that the balloon shrinks. So inside the glass jar now we have a very simple piece of apparatus. It basically it's a glass jar with a bung on the top. There's some liquid in it which I've coloured red and there's some air between the liquid and the bung. There's also a tube which dips into the liquid and comes out and you can just make it out here. Now at the moment the pressure of the air inside the glass jar is the same as the pressure in the air inside the glass vessel here. So everything's balanced. But if I pump out the air from the glass jar here, the pressure is going to drop on the outside. The pressure of the air inside here is going to be the same. But because this is dropping, basically this is going to allow that to expand, which is going to cause liquid to rise up the tube to balance it. I can show you that. So as I reduce the pressure here, this air is allowed to expand, which causes the water to rise up the tube. So basically, the level of this water will depend on the pressure in here. This is how a barometer works uh, to use to predict weather. Basically, as the weather changes, the air pressure goes up and down. 
And we don't usually have water in a barometer, we have uh, mercury, but it's the same principle. The mercury will go up and down as the air pressure is changing. So in this little experiment, this is like the whole of our atmosphere, and this is like our little barometer. So this is a water barometer. One of the more unpleasant experiments they used to do was to put live animals in the bell jar. Basically to show that all animals need air to breathe. So they sometimes used to put birds in the bell jar, pump out the air, and the bird would flop down apparently dead. And they put the air back in and it will come to life. But more than often they die, obviously because they're asphyxiating. So I've got a little rat here. As I pump out the air, of course, uh, the pressure is going to drop on the outside. Any air that's inside the rat is therefore going to be allowed to expand. And in principle, I suppose, if you were thrown out into space or into a bell jar, that's what would happen. The parts of you that have air in you will start to expand, and this would happen. So the idea of this experiment is to show that we need air to transmit sound. So I've got an alarm clock here that's just about to go off and I'm going to remove the air from the bell jar and hopefully we shouldn't really be able to hear the alarm going if there's no air in here to transmit the sound. Never going to get there, is it? Because the clock's run out. <laughs> How long would we have been there? Not much difference, is there? That's not much difference. 